Yeah. Do it all. <laughs> um, right, so back to you, Luol. How did you get them from the mean streets of South London to be, an, I mean, a basketball superstar, one of the best players in the world? Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. Well, uh, I used to, I started here playing for Brixton, uh, Brixton Top Cats with Jimmy Rogers. And uh, the way I got to the U.S. was my sister, who's two years older than me, uh, she's very good at basketball, and uh, she got a scholarship. Um, and I was too young for my parents to let me go to the U.S. Um, so the only way my dad let me go was to go over and look after my sister. Uh, and she was two years older than me. Uh -huh. So I went over to the U.S. and I, uh, I played high school basketball. Uh, when I got there when I was 14, I played varsity. And I started uh, in varsity, which you know doesn't happen very often when you're that young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I played from the start, but you it, were, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, which was really great. But my coach had no idea that I could really play basketball. You know, he he just took me in because you know to look after my sister. Yeah. Um, but it worked out well. After four years in high school in New Jersey, um, I was um, I got recruited by uh, Duke University. And uh, Duke is uh, a, a powerhouse when it comes to basketball. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the best schools of basketball. And um, I was at Duke for one year, and I was drafted as the seventh pick by uh, Chicago Bulls. Dream, the dream come true. But before all of that, and even before Britain, I mean, you escaped Sudan in civil war, didn't you? Ended up in Egypt as well, and over to Britain. What do you think would have happened to you if you'd stayed? In no, Sudan? I'm, uh, I'm very blessed. You know, very blessed and very lucky. Um, it's been a civil war in Sudan for you know over 25 years, uh -huh. and actually this year, uh, South Sudan just got their independence. Um, so it's been That's a long, and got. this is yeah. the, yeah, this is the flag that I have on my wrist. Uh -huh. uh, so it has been an amazing year, but um, I really, I, I, uh, we left Sudan when I was five years old. Um, and like you said, because of the war, uh, we left as refugees and we fled to Egypt. I was in Egypt for five years with my family and um, we were given a political asylum to come here as refugees yeah. uh, to London. Uh, since I was 10. So When's the know. movie coming out of your life? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an incredible story. You've, no. done, you've done an awful lot, yeah. haven't you? I mean, you've even set up a foundation to help young people, um, and, and you've set them up in the places closest to your heart, I guess, such as Chicago, yes. Sudan, and here in the UK. Yes. Um, Obama even awarded you a humanitarian award for yes. it. So what exactly does the foundation do then? Well, the foundation, being a refugee myself, um, I just know how lucky I am for what I got and what I have now. So what I try to do is just give back. Uh, so we really focus on sports, um, education, and we also do a lot of things where, you know, we provide um, refugees with food and, uh, and shelter and things like that. Um, and the foundation, uh, you know, has been picking up. Uh, when I first started the foundation, um, I did a lot of things with other organizations to get going. Um, but now that we have the idea, we could really focus on the things that, you know, uh, yeah. we want to aim towards. So. Well, you are an incredible inspiration. I mean, you really, I've actually got some footage of you out in Sudan. Chat oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Here we go. Maybe one of you guys is capable of being somebody special. Maybe you'll be the president of this country, and one day you're going to lead us, and we're going to have a great country. We said Luol is leading the British basketball team in the Olympics next year. Now, you might be one of the thousands who unfortunately missed out on Olympic tickets, but... Well, never mind just <laughs> watching the games. There is still time, your chance to actually, believe it or not, compete in them. OK, we'll let Matt Allwright explain all. Here we go. I suppose you're thinking that it's too late to win gold for Britain at 2012. Well, you're wrong. There is a Team GB that needs you right now. The requirements, well, you've got to be tall, you've got to be athletic, and you've got to be a girl. It's played by over 30 million people around the world, so why on earth do we know nothing about handball? OK, well, it's like five-a-side football, but you can't use your feet, or basketball without the basket. Handball first appeared at the Olympic Games in 1936, and as we're hosting 2012, we've automatically qualified. Because it's so popular throughout the world, we've built a fancy stadium costing £44 million just to host it. So, the least we can do is get our money's worth. You get to dribble, pass and score, but you have to do it all with your hands. I'm not a girl, but I'm tall, 
got lightning feet and great hands. So the girl said, I can have a go. Wasn't ready. What's the handball lifestyle like? Well, I think it's the greatest job in the world. I get to get up, go to training. It keeps me fit. I've seen the world. I'm doing something I love. You just get to let off so much aggression on the court, and it's so fast. So describe for me your perfect team member. What are you looking for? Right now, we're looking for our talent squad that will train alongside us, uh, work really hard towards the Olympics, and we're looking for the best people for handball and the best people to put forward for the Olympics. If you're tall, you've got good hands, and you like international travel and Norwegian men, handball, it could be you. Guys? Yes. See, a girl. Yeah. Tall, athletic, yeah. girl, tallish, not so athletic. I think you Could be in the Olympics. It. Honestly, I really do. You know what you should do? What? Log on to the website, oh, bbc.co.uk <laughs> forward slash the one show. All the details are on there. Yes. Brilliant. Now, well, I was watching last night the basketball. Absolutely incredible finish. It's so exciting as a spectator sport. There you are, 80-80 with Australia. Yeah. 1.8 seconds to go until the end of the match. And this is what happened. <laughs> Dang. He's not going to get the shot away. He gets it away, and it misses. Oh, stay oh, but I mean, you, you, how you got that shot away was unbelievable, but you can really do it. Have a little look at this. I mean, this is unbelievable. Open. Two. for you to come back from playing with the Chicago Bulls and playing with a team that at the minute is ranking 56th in the world. Is that quite strange? I think the ranking is wrong. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> yes. How wrong? I think the ranking is really wrong. I think, um, you know, in the past, I understand the ranking, but, you know, where we are now, GB basketball, I think we're way beyond, uh, we're way better than uh, 56. And I think, you know, only time will tell. You know, Medal hopes then? I mean, we're, you know, we're preparing for it. We're working very hard, but we have, you know, we have the guys that can do it. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Well, we are joined by some young players from the uh, Lewisham Thunder Basketball Club. We've got some questions here for you, Noel. Okay. You are their hero. Goes without saying. First up is Roel. Roel, that's your question. Who do you owe your success to for why you're here today? I mean, uh, you know, it always, the first thing is always God, you know, uh, just a blessing from God. But... You know, I just saw uh, my family, of course, you know, my parents just uh, being very positive, us sticking together. You know, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be here. No. Okay. Uh, next, Scarlett, what's your question? What would you give to players like us who want to follow in your footsteps? I always say, you know, you guys, uh, you know, kids, you guys are the future. You guys are capable of anything, you know, just hard work, believe in yourself and, uh, you know, just keep pushing yourself and you'll get there. OK, let's have a question from uh, Josh. Where are you, Josh? In your basketball career, what would you say is your greatest achievement and why? My greatest achievement would be um, getting drafted. Uh, you know, I think it's just, uh, it's always been a dream of mine when I was growing up. And, you know, that day, just sitting there and hearing, you know, Commissioner Dave Stern say my name, uh, it was just an unbelievable feeling. It's just what I was working hard to get to, so... Yeah, okay. And well, why do you think that basketball over here isn't as popular as it is in America? I really think it just, uh, it, it doesn't get enough attention. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I really think that there isn't enough facilities, mm -hmm. um, but the talent is here. You know, the talent is, you know, you could see the talent even with the few kids that we have that play basketball right mm -hmm. now. Uh, but what happens is, uh, at a young age, kids are really into it. Um, but as they get older, there isn't really much attention, you know, and there isn't enough facilities for them to work at, so... It's always the case of getting over that age of about 15, isn't it? If you can push through that and get on, then, you know, you, you really... Yeah, well, we all know, you know, the thing with young kids is uh, whatever you put, you know, if, they, if you're giving them attention and, yeah. you know, there's attention towards what they're doing, they stick with it. But when there isn't, you know, they look for other things to do. Yeah, OK, great. Great question. Today. Yeah, well, thanks so much to the Lewisham Thunder Basketball Club. And now then, uh, changing.